Okay, today we're going to talk about QLA's calibration toolkit, part number VAL TOL KT2. That's dash KT2. Um, there are several components in the toolkit, and the purpose of the kit is to measure the parameters that are required in USP, ASTM, um, centering, wobble, height and uh, level. So we're going to start with the centering gauge. The centering gauge is a very unique gauge, uh, not similar to any others you're going to see out there. It has some very unique characteristics. First of all, just looking at the gauge, you're going to see that it's a very precision gauge and it has very high resolution. The divisions, if we can get real close here, we're going to look at the divisions and you're going to see that uh, each numbered division is like a half a millimeter in reading. So, and of course there are ten divisions between each half millimeter, so that means each division is 0 0.05 millimeters. Very precise gauge, very high resolution. So, uh, before we get started with looking at how we measure centering, we're going to talk about a couple of issues to look at before we even do that. And that is what you want to do is make sure you have the right vessels for the right machine. We've got three machines here, Distech, Van Kell, Hansen as an example, but they all have different mounting requirements for their vessels and that sort of thing. And what we see quite often, for example, sometimes you will see, this is a Hansen bath, and it just so happens that Hansen vessels are three millimeters bigger approximately than most other vessels. What I see frequently is somebody installing possibly sun vessels and what you can see is they wobble around. They do not fit properly so they should not be used in this Hansen bath. Kymax vessels, same problem. They move around, they do not fit the design mounting of a Hansen bath. Uh, the same holds true if you try to put a Distech vessel in here, a Van Kell vessel. The point is, make sure that you have vessels that have been designed for that unit. Uh, QLA vessels are made specifically for the individual units, so you either need original equipment or QLA vessels specific to that particular machine. Another thing you want to look for on the Van Kell instrument only, there's an issue that you want to check before you start measuring centering that's important. You want to look at your easel line brackets and you want to look at the feet. There's six feet on here. Quite often you'll find one broken off, sometimes more. That unbalances the centering and causes the, the rim to not center the vessel the way that it was designed to um, center. Now QLA also offers these brackets. Let me get one. QLA version of the same bracket you can buy from QLA. These brackets are a little sturdier, the feet don't break as easily, and even if they do break, they're replaceable. Uh, just point that out. But the point is, make sure all the feet are good on these brackets. Okay, now we're going to go back to the gauge. The way that we mount the gauge in a spindle is with a surrogate shaft. The surrogate shaft will fit the Hansen, Van Kell, or Distech all the same way. Then the gauge gets mounted to it. This little device is in the tool kit. goes through a hole in the upper shaft. You can grab the knurled knob here, tighten them together. And then what you want to do is put the shaft that screws into the bottom of the gauge. It becomes simply an anti-rotation device, which you'll see in a moment. Now what we're going to do is lower the drive head, loosen the lock, lower the drive head. Now we've engaged the vessel, and we can start by looking at tilt. I'm going to zero the gauge. We can zero it onto the 40, and that gives me a clean starting point. But now what I'm going to do is, I'm up at the top of the vessel, now I'm going to lower it down to about where the paddle operates approximately, and that's close to the radius and I'm going to observe how far this moved. 
during that travel because I'm looking at tilt basically. In fact, I'm looking at something even more important than tilt. A lot of people look at the, the tilt of the shaft, the paddle shaft, and tilt of the vessel levelness. These are all important, but the relationship of the spindle to the vessel is what's even the most important. And this is actually measuring tilt in that regard. Measured that way, I would allow up to a half a millimeter. The bass are generally very good with regard to that. We only moved about 0.05 millimeters. So with regard to that issue, this bath is very good. Now I've set the RPM at 25 RPM, a nice slow RPM speed, and that's what we'll run it at. So again, the anti-rotation device, that's all it does. Just put your finger in front of it to block the rotation has to do with friction in the bearings within the unit itself. Now we're going to look at how much movement we're getting on the dial indicator. One easy thing to, one th helpful thing is to rotate the gate dial all the way over to the 40 at one furthest position. Then look at how far it's traveling. It's traveling from the 40 one, one and a half, 1.7 millimeters. 1.7 millimeters. So on this particular location, the centering, we measured a runout of 1.7. Now, the next thing you have to do is you take that number and divide by 2. That's because of the way the USP defines centering. Um, the axis of, one of the spindle being coincide with the axis of the vessel within a certain amount, which means you take the, the indicated reading the total runout, which in this case was 1.7 millimeters, divided by 2, which will be, let's see, what is that? 1.7, 5, 3 and a half, about 8 and a half, 0.85 millimeters. So obviously we're well within the USP requirement, actually happens to be within the ASTM requirement of 1 millimeter. USP is 2 millimeter, ASTM is 1. So this meets both of those. Uh, and then of course we'd go around to the rest of the vessels and do the same thing. And record those numbers. Do the math, record the numbers. And what we're going to do now is very quickly just demonstrate that this also... By the way, these gauges are all calibrated. They come from the factory, originally calibrated. They got their stickers on them. They're all certified. There's a certificate of conformance in the calibration. Every component in the kit is certified. Calibrated and certified. And of course, when annually you can return them to QLA for recalibration. So with a Hansen unit, almost the same thing. Loosen the collet, install the, the surrogate shaft, tighten the collet, Install the, the gauge. Also, everything is serialized. Um, one thing I forgot to point out, that is when you lower the drive head, it's a good idea to, with your thumb to deflect the gauge so that it doesn't basically crash hard, make a hard contact. It does have a big ball for easy engagement, but still much better to retract it, and then once you entered, You've begun the engagement, you can release it. Now again, I'm up at the top of the vessel. I'm going to lower the drive head. Well, we'll set it to the 40 again so I have a, a good sort of a zero. There is no real zero on this gauge, but 40 is kind of that position. <laughs> 